I love how even in space fiction, dwarves are presented as characters who love to mine, fight, and especially drink. Even to the point of them having their own personal all-you-can-drink lounge in their space-drifting home known as the Abyss Bar. So one of the more innocuous things that is actually a crucially important feature in Deep Rock Galactic is the Abyss Bar and the bonuses and benefits it provides for the player. Not only does it open up another path for progression and unlocking things, but what you do unlock is a plethora of useful and sometimes game-saving buffs that can turn a potentially difficult mission into an incredibly easy one. So if you guys are ready, today we're going to talk about the Abyss Bar, how drinks work, how you can unlock them, what kinds of effects they have, and when it might be a good time to use them. By the way, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to never miss another upload. That was maybe a little more than we could handle. So the Abyss Bar is certainly a comfortable and inviting place to be on the space rig, with its nice decor and dedicated bartender Lloyd. But what exactly does it do for a new player? Well, for starters, you don't even gain access to the Abyss Bar until you hit player rank 3, but trust me, that will happen super quick. It should only take like 2 or 3 missions to get there. And essentially, it's a place for you to mix together and unlock concoctions, which can be very fun, but also many of them have impactful benefits for the player when going through missions. Now, in order to use these drinks, you will need to collect specific crafting ingredients while down in the caves. These resources being the Barley Bulb, Yeast Cone, Malt Stars, and Starch Nuts. As a quick side note, barley bulbs are probably the most important out of all of these materials, and I'll explain why in a bit. Thankfully, these resources are not biome-specific, so you can find them anywhere. So just be sure to keep an eye out for them during your assignments, as you will need a lot of them in total. Once you do, then you can acquire the license for each drink and be able to order them at your leisure. Just uh, make sure you tip Lloyd for his time. He's definitely the hardest working employee out of the whole company, including us, so he deserves some respect. There are some minor differences in the procurement of certain drinks, which we'll go over in the next section, but essentially there are a total of 25 different drinks that players can procure for the bar, and they are split into three different categories. Default drinks, special drinks, and fun drinks. Default drinks are always available to the player from the beginning, and you don't need to do anything to acquire them. They don't offer any real benefit to the players and are just there as something that you can always order. The Oily Oaf is the basic standard drink that doesn't do anything and is just the baseline. The Glyphid Slammer is similar, albeit a little bit stronger, and the last drink is irrelevant to talk about because you should literally never order this one, and if you do, you bring shame to the name of Carl and everyone will shun you. No, I'm just kidding. It's called Leaf Lover's Special and it basically just sobers you up. But seriously though, real dwarves don't need this, so you should never order it. Then we move on to the fun drinks, which again, don't offer any actual benefits to the player during missions. They just do really funny things to the player when they drink them. To give a few examples, Arkan Stout is so cold that it actually freezes you solid for a few moments. Or Malt Breaker, which causes your model to grow larger for a short time while in the space rig. And my personal favorite, Wormhole Special, which teleports you randomly around the space rig and can even send you outside into space. Again, funny effects that don't have any real impact on missions or performance. Well, with two exceptions. First, we have the Randomizer, which is a drink that when consumed, it randomizes your entire loadout until the end of your next mission, from weapons to mods to overclocks to even your cosmetics. It's a cool way to give yourself a little challenge to see if you can work with weird and unusual loadouts. The other exception to this is the newly added Hidden Dwarf Drink, which, without going into too much detail, essentially lets you play Prop Hunt on the Space Rig. It's a fun little minigame you can play between rounds that can help add a little bit more entertainment when you're waiting for your buddy to get back after going to get a snack 45 minutes ago. Maybe this was one too many. Now we move on to the most important of the drinks, the daily specials that actually give you benefits when you go on to missions. These drinks are sold only one at a time, so you can only have one available. These drinks are the only ones that require barley bulb to craft, hence why I said earlier that they are the most important resource to gather. These effects last for the duration of a single mission and change whenever you come back to the space rig, either after a mission has failed or completed, or if you disband the team. Fun fact that I actually discovered during making this video, if you're playing solo, you can just keep disbanding the team over and over and over again and checking the bar until you get the specific brew that you want to use. In any event, there are a total of 8 different drinks that rotate, and now we'll go through them and say what they do exactly, and when it might be be a good time to use them. First, we have Backbreaker Stout, which makes it so that way when you carry heavy objects, you move faster by about 30%. Heavy objects include things like aquatic gems, alien eggs, mini mule eggs, gunk seeds, and essentially anything that you have to carry with both hands. These are really good to take on things like point extractions, egg hunts, salvage missions, or really any biome that can have jotties or enter pearls, since I don't know about you guys, but I hate lucking these things around all the time. Even without that, however, this can be a pretty useful one to take on essentially any mission type. 
Next is dark morkite, which makes that way you mine about 40% more of the morkite mineral. Now, of course, since this is only applied to morkite, I would only really use this if you are going onto a mining mission or going into a deep dive where morkite might be an objective. Sadly, it does not apply to the on-site refining missions, even though you are technically gathering liquid morkite, so this drink is one of the very few specific brews that I would say you can only use a couple of times. Next up is Pots of Gold, which is probably one of the fan favorites among the dwarves as it gives you four times the amount of gold mined which can fill your pockets very quickly. This can give you an incredible payout, especially if you are very efficient. One very important thing to note is that this only applies to gold that is mined with a pickaxe. So it won't work if your driller uses a satchel charge, his EPC, or if you have Bosco mine it for you since, well, he can't drink. This also means that it does not combo with the Golden Bugs Mutator since that gold drops from bugs themselves. It does, however, work well with the Gold Rush Mutator, which can be extremely profitable. Basically, this is almost always a good choice to take, except maybe for point extraction missions since you have to keep going back and forth to the mine head to deposit, which can be rather tedious. Red Rock Blaster is up next, and this one is super simple and useful as it gives you almost a 70% increase to your max health. There really isn't a reason not to take this one when it's available, as more health is never a bad thing. It can help a lot, especially if a mission has really difficult hazards like lethal enemies, elite threats, or shield disruption, or if you are doing an elite deep dive. Basically, it just makes you more durable, which is never a bad thing. Up next is Rocky Mountain, which reduces the number of hits it takes to mine terrain by two. This is another pretty much universally useful drink to take, as it basically makes it so that way you can mine out any bio in one shot which is beyond useful. It lets you get through the tunnels quicker, reach minerals faster, get to hard to reach areas faster, and it makes the radioactive exclusion zone actually manageable without the need of a driller. The only time I would say you don't really need this one is if you're on sandblasted corridor since the terrain there can already be mined in one hit. Gold Crusher Ale is for those who like to be up close and personal with the bugs as it increases your base pickaxe damage by 20. This is yet another universally good one to take as it really doesn't have any special conditions or things to keep in mind. Your pickaxe just does more damage which can help you take out things slightly quicker if they are close to you. Slayer Stout is another one for people who like to hit things as it makes the cooldown of your pickaxe power attack only 25% of what it normally is. So you can hit things a lot harder a lot more often. This can be very useful for many different reasons. It can help you deal with bigger and tougher enemies that are weaker to pickaxe damage like oppressors a lot easier. It also can let you go through terrain relatively faster as you'll be able to power attack sooner. Ultimately, this is another super safe option that I would recommend taking pretty much every time. Last but not least is Tunnel Rat, which causes you to take 60% less fall damage. This is good for people like me who find themselves falling from high places more often than not. The damage mitigation is really good and makes normally lethal falls nothing more than minor annoyances. Nice to run if you are a scout in training and haven't quite learned the grappling hook just yet. If you're running a mission with low gravity, you are practically invincible and it can be a really fun combination to avoid damage. Ultimately, the Abyss Bar is more than just a place to buff yourself out and get some mission bonuses. It's a place to hang out with your friends and swing back a few to see what happens. There are some seriously funny moments that happen in the bar, and whether you're with friends or randoms, there's always something fun going on. From arcade games to hide and seek to just getting completely plastered, I don't think there could have been a more perfect choice for a social hub for DRG than this cozy little drink stand. Anyway, hope you guys found this video enjoyable. If you did, be sure to give it a like because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Rocket Stone Miners, I'll see you in the next video.